Okay, so uh, let's understand why we have to learn to be target traders and why we can't scalp. This is a little Excel spreadsheet that we've developed to illustrate uh, the reason. I mean, we can say that you shouldn't scalp and you should be getting more pips, and that's easy to say, but there's another thing when the numbers prove it out. So as if you look over here on the right, you can see that I have stops set in this Excel spreadsheet to be 30 pips, okay? Now, um, what that means is is that it's an average, and a retail trader typically is about a 30 pip stop. But understand that having a 30 pip stop by itself is a recipe for failure. What you have to have is a stop that's based on the technical stop. And the technical stop may be 27 pips on this trade, it may be 33 on the next trade, it may be 34 on the next trade, it may be 29 on the next one, it might be 41 on the next one. On an average, it's about 30 pips. So uh, if you're putting 30 30 pips stops in as an automatic, then I guarantee you you're going to get stopped out. So what is the technical stop? The technical stop is the last support or resistance plus 5 to 7 pips on an odd number that ends in a 3 or a 7. And we use an odd number on a 3 or a 7 because option contracts are on, on a even numbers. Therefore, we want to always have a stop on an odd number that is a 3 or a 7. We don't use 5 because it's half of 10. Okay, And uh, so, uh, let me say it again. The technical stop is the last support or resistance, depending on your direction, going up or going down, plus 5 to 7 pips on an odd number that ends in a 3 or a 7. Okay. Now, if you look up here in the corner, you see I have five pips as the number of pips captured. Now, the average retail trader in the market trades for only five to eight pips. Now, uh, that's not me saying that. That's our broker telling us. With hundreds of thousands of traders, they tell us that the average retail trader only gets five to eight pips on a winning trade. And that creates a huge dilemma. The reason that it does is because you are breaking the very first rule of margin management. And the first rule of margin management is that you never make a trade without a risk to reward ratio of at least one for one. So if you're risking 30 pips, which is your stop, then your limit or your target must be a minimum of 30 pips away, okay? So if you take 5 pips as your average profit and you're risking 30 pips, you instead of having a 1 to 1, you have a 6 for 1. You're risking 30 pips to make 5, all right? So uh, that's why it's so critical. When you, when you make a trade and you win and you get 5 pips, you go, oh, yay, 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 I just won, isn't this awesome? And what you ended up doing was you won the battle, you had a winning trade, but you just lost the war, okay? What I mean by losing the war? Well, with 30 pips stops, as you can see, trading for 5 pips uh, as a winning trade, if you look down here in the Excel spreadsheet, that over time, you must be 90% correct to have an increase in your margin account. And that's 90% for the rest of your life. Oh sure, there are times when you may have a, a you know a, a winning streak where you win at 100%, but you can't do that for the rest of your life. You may do that for 15 trades or 25 trades or you know, I've I did 67 trades in a in a row one time and 78 one time. So during that period, yes, I was uh, you know 100% correct during that period, but I eventually took a loss as do all traders. All right? So, we cannot trade for 5 to 8 pips, okay? Because you have to be you'll have to be 90% correct for the rest of your life which means you must then be the best trader who lives on the planet okay since that's not possible or feasible in any trading environment you have to stop it immediately okay so you take a winning trade for five pips you win the battle you just lose the war because now you got to be right for 90 percent of the time for the rest of your life now if we just simply trade this to a simple one it changes to a one-to-one -one risk for reward okay you can see now we're risking 30 pips to make 30 pips now we only need to be 50 percent right for the rest of our life to break even so simply trading at 51 percent will give us an 
uh, increase in our margin account. If we make 100 trades, we win on 51 of them, we lose on 49 of them, we still have an increase in our margin account. So that's why the minimum that we can learn to trade for is 30 pips, okay? But of course, uh, we at Forex Target Traders, we learn to trade for 55 pips or more. Now when we change the Excel spreadsheet to 55 pips, things dramatically change. As you can see down here, we now only need to be right 40% of the time and we will have an increase in our margin account. But I want to show you something that's very interesting. When we increase our, our um, skill level from 40% to 50%. In other words, we get a little better. And what happens to our money? Just look at it over here in a standard account. Uh, before we made $400 at 40% and now when we increase our skill level of 50% we make $1,250 in our margin account. That's a 300% increase in our margin account. All right? So you have to learn to trade for 30, 55, 90, 100, 120, 150 pips. Those are what you have to learn to trade for. You know, the statistics show that the average trader who goes in the market, over 90% of them will fail. Well, guess what? They, that's because the average trader is only taking five to eight pips out of the market, which means he has to be 90% correct. Is there a correlation? I think there absolutely is a correlation. Unless you learn to trade for 30, 55, or more pips as your target trading, then you have stacked the deck against you not with you. And so many traders come to the Forex and they learn to scalp or they learn a moving average crossover or something simple like that and they go, look how much money we could have made. And they start training themselves to trade bad because they haven't learned to target trade, to find those targets and then stay in for those targets. So this is the key to trading. It's not finding a good trade, folks. It's about margin management. Learning to trade to a target, being committed to staying in to that target, and instead of uh, uh, losing the war, we win the war. And so this spreadsheet just makes it very, very clear. It's just numbers. There's nothing fancy here. It's just the way it works. So you have to learn to be a target trader. So we're going to go in the market now and we're going to take a look at how we do this. Okay, so um, as we know now, based on pure mathematical numbers, we cannot be successful if we're trading for five to eight pips, which is what the average retail trader is trading for. Therefore, we must learn and have the discipline to change what comes naturally. Our natural uh, disposition is we got f five pips, that's 50 bucks I could put in my account, and yeehaw, I'm a winner. Okay, that's the natural inclination, and the big boys are counting on you doing exactly that, right? Because that's how they cream you. All right. So what we need to do is say, OK, can we find these targets? That's the real key. Just because you say you got to trade for five to eight pips doesn't mean anything unless you know how the, the market moves and can we find those targets. So I'm just going to scroll through some charts to today. I'm just let me take this up. This is the dollar CAD. I'm up here in a 60 minute chart. OK. And we can see here is a top. Now we have a little tool that we created that has HSIs. It's called an HSI tool, but it has Fibonacci values values and it has support and resistance. Basically it's a tool for finding targets. That's what it is. Now we don't need to know all about all that sort of stuff today. This is just an example to show you. But once we once we have a time a, a top or a bottom, we can then click on that top and say okay, we're now a seller. All right, and let's just see what happens as the market moves down. As you can see, it goes right to the S1 or the first support. It goes out to the second support, comes down here to the third support, backs off, and then eventually gets down here to the fourth support. All right? Now, we would have known these before it ever happened. Once we had a top in place, these numbers get it plotted for us okay automatically you can see now we're breaking down below here and we're on our way now to the s5 that's what we're trying to get to so we can pinpoint these targets these little blue lines you see here are also target lines are based on the 
pivot point, and uh, they're called T30s, and these are 30 pips apart, okay? So they're interim targets on the way to the uh, the ultimate target, okay? So there's the dollar CAD right there. Let's take a look right next door to it, to, this, to the pound dollar. I'm going to take this one up to a 60-minute chart also, and, uh, you know, we'll just simply, let's just take this big downtrend trend right here. All right, so here's a big downtrend. We've got a top in place. All right, so once we have a top in place, we just simply call it, we're a seller, boom. And you can see how the market went right to the first support, the second support, the third support, fourth support, down to the fifth support, okay? And once again, we're now breaking and trying to get to the sixth support. Will we get there? Well, we'll see. Uh, haven't got there yet. But uh, you can see, you can plot these targets, okay? Let's take a look down here at the EU. Now, you know, that's a 60-minute chart, okay? Let's just take it down here. There's the uh, euro uh, dollar. We'll take it down to the 10-minute chart where you and I trade, okay? So this has been today, trading up today. How could we have done had we known those targets? Let's just scroll back here. All right, we now see that we've got a bottom in place. And where are we going to go? We take this little target and tool, put it on here, tell it we're a buyer, and it gives us the first, the second, the third, fourth, the fifth. All these are done for us in advance. This is where the market's going to try to go once we figure it out, okay? So up she goes. There she takes out the R2. Continuing on down, we go back, pull back, and boom, right to the R3. Notice how that happens. It goes to the pip here. You see that? Now remember that these T30s are 30 pips apart. So when you broke down, when you took off from down here up to here, you went through one, two, plus a uh, half here. So, you know, roughly about 75 pip move to that R3. The key is you'd have known that ahead of time. What did the average trader do? They took five pips out of here and watched us against 70 pips, and they didn't know it was going there. That's how easy it can be if you learn to target trade. What was it going the other way? Let's remove all the tools. Here's a top in place. Can we find out where it's going down to? Okay, let's just see, boom. Down to the S1, down to the S2, down to the S3. See that? Right there. All right. And you notice that we never got a signal to sell after that. Remember, they, our, our sell signals are these bright red candles with the arrows and the painted candles telling us, right here, take the trade to the S3. There's another move to the S3. Now, we never get another sell over here. Nothing, But what we do get is buys. Take a buy, take a buy, take a buy, take a buy. See that? So um, it's, it's pretty easy to find if you have the right tools and you know how to stay into these targets. Let's take a look at the EJ, okay? Here's the EJ today, okay? Let's just see from this bottom. Would we have been able to find that uh, where the market is trying to go? Yes, we can. Right to the R1, right to the R2, and exactly the R3, and stops dead right there and pulls to the side, okay? So you can see. You can learn to target trade, and if you learn to target trade, what you have done is you've beaten the big boys at their own game because they're betting that you won't do it. They're, they know that you're going to grab five to eight pips, and therefore you must be 90% right for the rest of your life. For them, it's like a casino. When you go to you know Las Vegas or you go to the French Riviera, wherever you go, the casinos build those great big buildings and all that stuff off of losers not off of winners, okay? So they know that if you're in the market, you're going to trade for five to eight pips and you're cannon fodder to them, right? But you can't be cannon fodder if you learn to trade for 30, 55, 100, 150, 200 pips. And when you learn to trade for those, you're, you're putting your money at risk less times and making more money each time. When you do take a loss, okay, instead of when you're taking a loss at 30, uh, 30 pip um, stop losses and five pip wins, as soon as you take one loss, you must be right six times in a row to break even on that one loss. You've got to pull... Um, seven trades in a row to pull ahead one lousy five pips right but when you learn to target trade and we have tools and ways to do it then you can learn to be successful in the largest of uh, financial market in the world
Okay, so our uh, next uh, lesson is going to be on how we actually go in the market and how we actually do trade these things. How do we find these targets? Uh, we're going to look at day charts and 240 charts and 60 minute charts. We're also going to look at where the proper place is to make a stop. So hey, you don't want to miss it. So down below here, you'll see that there is a uh, opportunity for you to send us a question, add a comment, whatever it happens to be. We answer every one of them. So make sure you do that. Send us your questions send us your comments we'll be happy to take care of that and listen you don't want to miss the next lesson because we're going to really get into some meat next section and uh, the only ones who do that are the ones who sign up for it so uh, also make sure that you send it to your friends your trading buddies whatever uh, because not only will we be helping yourself you're going to be helping the fellow trader and that's always worthwhile so don't miss the next video